Hey everybody! Reeves on the Reeves cam. Oh, she put that piano in there. <laughs> Wait. Wow, look at that keyboarding. <laughs> Hey, Reed. Oh, you're coming over? We're gonna. She said, I dare you to dance for a full minute at the beginning of a live event. They don't do this on QVC, folks! Or HSN. Wait, show them our moves with our arms. The audio's way over there, your mic's way over here. Am I flossing right? Okay, you're embarrassing me. <laughs> hey, everybody! Hey, I forgot my tambourine. Oh. Just put it back on me, you Can you tell I have no rhythm? Yes. You don't need rhythm. That's why we put the music on. Hey, everybody! Welcome to these two dorks. That's right. Thank you, Mother. I concur. I think there's like a few new people and they're probably like, what is it though? What are we doing here today? We are cooking all kinds of things up using Well Your World products. We have all these new products. Many of you have already purchased. And so I want to show you how to use them all. You can turn that music off. I was going to play it the whole time. No. Okay. <sighs> how are you today, Rebecca? I'm pretty good. I'm really excited. What are you most excited for today? That we're actually like doing stuff, and we're going to make this, and we're going to make that, and we're not just going to sit and do the chatting. Okay. So you're excited to not be sitting like our normal Thursday show. <laughs> Message received. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm we're going to make... i do something different. How many things are we making on the list today? Like 10 items to show you guys everything? Um, Reebs, please feel free to... Uh, Keep us surprised of any questions that come up in the chat box. We're going to be showing you all kinds of Well Your World products. Uh, like I was saying, these are up for sale now. You can buy everything you see here today at the wellyourworld.com slash store website. There's a link down below the video. Reeves, maybe you can put the link in the chat box here and there. You could even, uh, can't you like pin a chat message, Reeves? I want to find out. So make a message and pin it. I'm pretty sure that can be done. Yeah. Can, do you have the functionality? I don't have. I can only remove my own message. You can only remove your own message? Then I will pin your message. I have no idea what that does. OK, there it is. It's pinned. All right. Um, let's begin. Welcome, everybody, to the show. This is their, our QVC telethon. <laughs> we do not have a phone, though. So you're just going to have to go to the website. You can't split up payments either. No splitting of payments. We're not doing easy monthly payments. Anyway, OK. What should we make first? I think we should make, what's up, Howie? Thank you very much for the super chat. Let's get cooking. You cook a lot for not being a chef. Happy November. <laughs> Wait, I want to shake my tambourine at that. I'm a cook. That's why I cook a lot. Oh. Reeves, is that going to be our super chat ritual? Is the tambourine? A well, little tambourine dance? You know, I bought this tambourine for our Halloween costumes, we were Lindsay Buckingham and Stevie Nicks, mm -hmm. and the tambourine came after we did the show, and I was like, I'm keeping it, so okay. I gotta keep it for something. Well, I like the tambourine super chat. Anybody that super chats today during the show will receive a tambourine seance of some sort. <laughs> seance. <laughs> You'll appear in our kitchen because it'll summon you here with magic. <laughs> Is there a buy everything package? Yeah, you just have to click add to cart on each item, and then you'll have everything. <laughs> so orders are going out. If you already placed your order, thank you for being patient. Their orders are going out. Not only are they going out more slowly, thank you, COVID, but there also are so many more orders than any time we've ever launched before. I think in the first day, we had over 600 orders, which is insane. So thank you all for the wonderful support of our new stuff. It's very exciting. Uh, if you're not on our newsletter, you can also do that at wellyourworld.com. There is a convenient post uh, from Reeves pinned in the chat box that will uh, take you to their website. 
and you can buy all this stuff there. Also, these wonderful shirts that you see. Arugula, never heard of her before. Reed's <laughs> designed some shirts that are there for you as well. And uh, so for right now, by the way, we are only able to ship to the USA. There were pandemic made international shipping really unreliable. And I was just, so we haven't gone back to doing international shipping. I hope to have that ready again in the next few months. Sorry for that. Um, so it is USA only right now. And uh, $50 order gets you free shipping, OK? So free shipping at 50 bucks. Let's get started. I want to show you our most popular item is still the mac and cheese, the mac, excuse me, it's called cheese sauce and gravy. These are still the two most popular items. Those I thought the banana pancake would blow it out of the water, and it is third place. Actually, I think the banana powder and the date powder are like right underneath of these <laughs> two. And the cheese sauce is, is on top. That is the popularity That's so far. Nice. It's good to get a visual representation. Good. I'm glad I could help. Dude, those were your first That's the ever magic products. of QVC. These were our first ever products. They've I gone mean, through so many different. Uh, this cheese sauce. I hope I'm not boring you with stories. <laughs> no, tell the people the stories. Tell the people the story. Go grab the big food mixer. It's in the garage. We still haven't <laughs> Here, sold can it. You we had, uh, it was funny actually, I put this up for sale, it was November 1st, I remember it was the day after Halloween in 2018, and I was like, well, I've got this thing that I make at home for me, and it's really handy, I just add water and maybe some cashews and any other like perishable things I might want to add to it, like miso paste or soy sauce or whatever, and uh, I mix up this cheese sauce. I don't have to like saute the onions and all this stuff anymore like my original cheese sauce video, which is one of my most viewed videos. But uh, so I started, so I put it up for sale with no stock. I thought, with no inventory, I thought uh, me might sell a few. You know, I, I had just started the cooking show. We have a cooking show this weekend, by the way. You can go to wellyourworld.com slash cooking show for the cooking show. Uh, we have an episode this week, and we're going to be making pumpkin recipes. Quick, fast, easy pumpkin recipes. So do sign up. Join us. So I had already been doing the cooking show for a couple of months. And then uh, I thought, well, I'll you don't want me to be looking at you? No. Even Not even close up like this? <laughs> no. OK. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you can just say, get my face off of that thing. Anyway. Um, so I put it up for sale, and we sold like a whole bunch. We sold like 100 in a matter of minutes. And I was like, oh no, how am I going to do this? Oh and no. I started mixing it in like these five gallon food grade buckets and bagging it up and uh, put vacuum sealing the bags and all this stuff. And we were shipping out of here. It was crazy. So I had to keep up with that. And then so I was looking online. I'm like, I need some kind of food grade mixer, something I can do bigger batches in. And I got this big, it just looks like a concrete mixer, but it's made for food. It has a different material that's food grade. And so I was mixing the cheese sauce in that thing for a long time. Someday I'll show you some videos of what that was like. But it, it pretty much ruined my laundry room clean-wise. There was just powder everywhere, because this stuff is pretty powdery. Uh, so anyway, that is how I first made it. Things grew and grew. <laughs> so, uh oh, we got a super chat again from Howie. Okay. Is that enough? Is that enough for the ritual super chat? I don't I've know. I've never done a ritual super chat response before. <laughs> Me never neither. considered that. Was it uh, just right? <laughs> I think it might have been just right. Thanks, Howie. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, then we were doing it in the food mixer. Then we, that was just too messy and too terrible. Because I could only make, after I made like uh, 200 bags in a day, I was just ready to die. So now we're actually doing it in these nice containers, recyclable containers. Um, and they're, they're a little bit small. I used to sell it in twice this amount. And I thought this would be better for people based on feedback and whatnot. So we have these pretty canisters. Nice labels. It's looking really classy. And we always keep improving. So I'm sure it won't be the last iteration you've seen. But yeah, when we put it up for sale, the cheese sauce and the gravy have been selling hot. And we'll run out eventually. I'm so proud of you, Bill. Oh, thanks. You're sweet. Do you want to be back on camera? No. OK. <laughs> All right, let's do this thing. So I am going to, we're going to make mac and cheese. I need to throw some pasta in the water. 
I've got some water of oil. And I like to make my mac and cheese with shells. So let's just dump some shells in there. We don't it's need to make... shells if you use peas. Oh, you wanna... super chat! Super chat. Oh, hit that tambourine. Let me get over here. Boom, 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 ding, 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 ding. Gina says, this is for such a great Halloween and all the work you put into it. Oh, thank you, Gina. That's very nice. Okay, so I put some pasta in. I put a little more because, Reeves, you actually want to have this for dinner. Didn't, did I already say that I like the shells because when you put frozen peas in it, then the peas end up in the shell like a little pearl and an oyster, and it's so cute. Yeah, with lots of sauce. Plus, the shells capture more sauce. Oh, that's what I forgot to get out. We bought fresh broccoli for this demonstration. Oh. Do you still want to? Up to you. I like to put steamed broccoli on top of my mac and cheese. Or frozen peas, like I said. Or fro Oh, we could do the frozen peas. I'm sure I have some frozen peas handy. That is one I often do throw in. Oh, the frozen peas are downstairs, I think. We have just about everything else up here. We do have, oh, we do have some frozen, we do have some frozen broccoli. The frozen broccoli works pretty good too, but meh. <laughs> I like the fresh a lot more because I don't like my broccoli very cooked and I like it pretty crunchy. So anyway, the pasta is in. Did I turn it up high enough? Yes. Let's make some cheese sauce with the new cheese sauce mix. Yeah, you see that griddle. You know I'm going to be making pancakes today. <laughs> but for now, this is what I like to do with my cheese sauce. For those of you that have never used it before, oh, Plant Fit Meg is running out of sriracha, I see. Meg, I am sorry about that. Uh, we hope to have it back very soon. This new batch of sriracha is my favorite one so far, too. So, not to rub it in. I could have I chosen different words just in that moment. Have what batch, though? You're talking about shipping? Shipping to Canada, yeah. Shipping to Canada. Okay, so what I'll usually do is put the water into the blender first. Because you know how if you put powder into the blender and then you add the water and it can get all stuck up under the blade and stuff? That doesn't usually happen with the Vitamix, but it has. And so let me show you what the cheese sauce powder looks So I, it's now made with my non-fortified newt. Where is that? So check out this. Uh, one of my biggest requested things. Have I not opened this yet? I guess not. There, there. There's one open? Yeah. Oh, there it is. One of my biggest uh, requested things was to switch from a fortified nutritional yeast to a non-fortified nutritional yeast. But most of the non-fortified nutritional yeasts are just too expensive. And uh, they don't taste very good. Well, I found one that does taste very good. So it's much less orange, though, compared to the fortified stuff. But the taste is the same, in my opinion. I think it's the same. Um, so that's the nooch. We're, we're, we'll sh play with the nooch later. So it's got more of like a tan color. But now, yes, I make the cheese sauce and the mushroom gravy with the non-fortified nutritional yeast, which you can buy in the store right now. What an upgrade! And I, my price is pretty darn good. I'm beating a Sari brand, S-A-R-I brand, that's quite popular in our community. I don't feel bad calling them out because I don't know, I don't think they're actually in our community. But uh, mine is a better price than theirs. Okay. So uh, the nooch, the cheese. So here's the cheese. I like to throw in some water first. And I just eyeball this, you know? Like, the, you don't need to worry about the directions so much. I mean, if, if you want to, you can. It's like two to one. But I usually just add some water about how much cheese sauce I'm going to want. Something like that. I use boiling water, but be careful if your blender can handle boiling in water or not, because um, it can build up a lot of pressure. The Vitamix can handle it. And then I just dump in, you just kind of test it out. Dump in some cheese sauce mix. The ingredients in the cheese sauce mix, it's with the nooch, like I said, and then it's got some potato flakes, turmeric, a little bit of cumin, a little bit of black pepper, some mustard seed, paprika, things like that. It's pretty simple stuff. And then I just add it in, in Little bits at a time. I haven't added enough mix yet. But this is the simple version. This is if you're not going to dress it up with anything else. I usually like to add either some dried chili pods. Do we have those out? No. I like to add 
How am I doing? Any questions you want to interrupt me for that yes. are pertinent? Go well, ahead. they're not pertinent because we're not doing sriracha right now, but okay. we have some sriracha questions. Okay, sriracha Just questions. Just order the sriracha. Hope it's not too hot. Did the recipe for sriracha change, and is it in a glass jar now instead of plastic? No, I can't really do it in a glass jar because, I mean, unless you want to pour it like ketchup, uh, I could do that, but... It, the recipe hasn't really changed, but with the, the red jalapenos, every batch is inevitably going to be just a little bit different because the, f the flavor and the spice of the peppers is always going to change a little bit. So that's really the only thing that's going to change much. I, had, I changed the lid, but the bottle is still a plastic bottle. Um, if, if people really want it in a glass bottle, to be honest, processing it into a glass bottle is much easier because the glass bottles can handle the higher temperatures. So, but it's not, it's the, I think it's probably the same amount of spicy as it's always been, which has a little kick, but you know, nothing It's definitely crazy. less spicy than a conventional sriracha, I would say. Oh, you think so? Mm-hmm. I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily say that, but I don't know. These are opinions. How is it on the Scoville? <laughs> the yeah, Scoville hotness The Scoville, uh, yeah, I don't have a tool to measure that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the other thing I like to do, this is steaming, is you can throw in these little, if you want to give it a little bit of a Mexican flavor, I like to throw in these little chili pods. But what I want to show you today is um, I also like to throw in, I'll show you here, a little bit of cashews are nice. If you want to cream thing, make it a little bit creamier, you could just take like a handful a little handful of cashews and throw those in there. Um, that's, you know, simple. Um, but now I've got this Mexican fire blend. This is, we, the reason I've come out with one random spice blend is because <laughs> I, it's not that easy to make spice blends that are really good. And every Mexican spice blend, and the reason I chose Mexican is because I haven't had a good Mexican spice blend, to be honest. I've always had to make it from scratch. Most of them are just like paprika and chili powder, and it's just like red whatever. Well, mine, I put some oregano, some marjoram, things like that. So now it's a much more beautiful uh, Mexican spice blend and one that I think is just worlds better. Look at how nice and bright green and gorgeous that is. It is a little spicy, but it actually isn't too spicy. So I called it a fire blend because I don't want anybody to think that it's completely mild. But uh, throw a little bit of that into the cheese sauce and you'll have like a nacho cheese sort of flavor to your cheese sauce from the chili peppers and the other spices in here. Um, we like to throw a little bit of lemon juice in sometimes. Ribs usually makes it with a little lemon juice or apple cider vinegar. Um, so it's pretty simple. I needed a little more cheese sauce mix, too. <clears throat> and then you can just let it grind for a while. Uh, you can... Some people will just put room temp water in and let the Vitamix heat it up. We were talking about that last night. Um, so there are lots of ways that you can do this. And people like to use it for the damnedest things. You know, I call it a cheese sauce mix, but people are telling me all the time they put it in their soups and stews. Same with the gravy mix. They use it as a soup base um, because it's got the flavors that you might make in a nice stew. Parsley, sage, rosemary, thyme, a mushroomy flavor, obviously. There's potato in here, which really the purpose of the potato flakes in this is to thicken it a little bit to give it a creaminess. Of course, I added cashews to go even more. <coughs> So there are a lot of ways you can use this. Let's see. This is still a bit watery, so I'm just going to add a little more mix. So there's, you don't have to worry about ratios or whatever. All you're going to do is take X amount of powder and add enough liquid to get this texture that you like in your perfect cheese sauce. So you don't have to worry about, it, it's not like you're making a recipe out of this thing. Okay. Still a little more, maybe? Depends on what you're pouring it on, really. Yeah, definitely. Tell me more about that, Reeves. Well, I guess why it's Sorry. Sorry. Sorry, everybody. Sorry, Reeves. Go ahead. <laughs> um, 
I mean, you can. Oh yeah. They've got those conventional cheese sauces in the store now that are plant based, and they're all different thicknesses. Oh yeah, um, good point. So you can make it really thick if you're just like dipping potatoes in it. You can make it thin if you're doing like a nacho cheese spread or like a seven layer dip or mm -hmm. mac and cheese. So here it is. I I made it. You know, pretty thick, but not too thick. And uh, let's have a little taste. So it's a little bit less yellow because, like I said, using the non-fortified nutritional yeast has a different result. Oh, that's good. <laughs> oh, the fire blend was really good in it. That's, <laughs> that's the first time I've actually done it. Yeah. Mmm. <laughs> okay. Let's check our pasta. I have a uh, question in the chat. Please. If you're feeling lazy about getting the blender out, could you do the cheese sauce with a whisk? You can. It just won't be as, as uh, smooth. It won't be as smooth, but it will still taste the same. Um, but yes, I I wanted it to be able to be done that way. Those those uh, shells are just need another minute. I wanted it to be simple enough. That's why I used a powdered mushroom in the mushroom gravy rather than a uh, sort of coarse ground mushroom because it wouldn't have been able. You'd had to have blend it. So uh, the mushroom gravy can also be done. Uh, with whisk style. We're gonna make that next and I'll mash some potatoes for you, which is one of my favorite things to eat. So let's get, Reeves, what else is going on? Let me get this pasta strained out while you talk. Um, <laughs> oh, there was a funny comment before. Somebody said, eating this way has made me spend a lot of money on QVC for new clothes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll happen. Uh, that means you're doing it right. Yeah. <coughs> Sarah says she uses an immersion blender instead. Oh yeah, totally. That would work. Mm -hmm. Just depends how big your container is. If you're making, you know, just a tiny portion, you don't have enough space to shove an immersion blender in. But if you're making a fair amount, definitely that would work great. Cool. Okay, let's get this going. So I'm just, the way I'll, I usually just do this back into a pot over the stove, but so that I can show you more easily, let's just grab our pasta, shake out some of the water. Hopefully, I think I made enough cheese sauce for this amount of pasta. We'll find out. Let's, we'll hold back a little bit. And then I just pour in my cheese. Oh, mm. yeah. Somebody said, is there a bundle of all provided? Of all of the different items I'm selling? Mm -hmm. No, I don't have anything in a bundle yet. Maybe someday. <laughs> just getting them made and for sale, let me tell you. Sorry, yeah, that was a long process. Howie says, I use an immersion blender to sneak vegetables people say they don't like into my sauces. <laughs> there you go. I'm rinsing this blender because I don't want it to dry. Because we're going to use it for gravy here in a few minutes. Okay, let's go back to this and give it a stir. Mm -hmm. This is like one of our go-to meals when... I mean, this is a five-minute meal. Yeah. Like, especially when we're like, oh, wait, we're starving. We didn't realize it. We didn't prep anything, and we need to eat dinner. What are we going to make? Mac and cheese. Mm-hmm. Let's put a little mac and cheese on this handy plate that I've got available here. Now, like I said, I love to put the pea. So in the last couple, maybe last minute that the uh, pasta is boiling, I'll throw a good f fair amount of peas, frozen peas, into the water. That'll thaw them out, get them up to temp. You can do the same with, I've done it with uh, fresh sliced zucchini. I love zucchini on any kind of food. <laughs> uh, just steamed enough to be a little bit crunchy. Broccoli, same thing. Broccoli and cauliflower with the cheese sauce mixed all over it. If you're not doing pasta, you can do potatoes, russet potatoes. The, the uh, cauliflower and broccoli you can get frozen in a bag from most stores already ready, mix together the broccoli and the cauliflower, steam it for just a few minutes, and then pour the, mix it up with your cheese sauce. It's such a good way to do it. And now, what else can I show off? Throw some sriracha on it. Oh, some sriracha. Yeah, we do do, we do, do that. So here is our sriracha. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The sriracha lid we changed, for those of you that notice. Um, because it's, it's not blended as homogenous. It's a little bit more texture in the sriracha uh, because I'm producing it somewhere else now. And so I switched to a lid with a little bit better hole. Plus, this hole is, uh, this lid 
is less fragile for shipping in a box because it won't break. Um, I still don't totally love this exact lid. I'm still working on that. We're always improving. Anyway, the sriracha is super tasty. I think you'll really like it. Let's taste this mac and cheese with a little bit of the nacho cheese flavor from the Mexican fire blend. Couldn't be better. Would you, you like a taste? No, thanks. You did a lot of combos on that. Combos? Oh, I'm <laughs> this is what, three products in one? <laughs> <laughs> That's the QVC way. You gotta show all the ways to use it. This is super good. <laughs> mm. Okay. You could, sometimes I slice up some olives. If you're eating any salt, I'll slice up some olives and put it on top of my mac and cheese. That's how I like to do it. It's super good. Okay, let's move on. You sure you don't want any ribs? I'm Hot. Sure. Okay, she's busy. <laughs> all right, thank you, Mac. All right. A lot of people are talking about ways that they plan to use the date powder. The and date I powder? Should we talk about that? I hope, w if you guys have ideas, send them to me because it, well, somebody said they make a no-bake brownie, just cocoa powder, almonds, and, and date powder. Whoa. I want to try all these ideas. That sounds pretty good. So there's the cheese sauce. Man, that came out really tasty. That sriracha does have a bit of a bite. Okay. So that, and that was the nooch. What else? We're, oh, we're going to use the nooch later to make some of your famous rice Yay. cauliflower. <laughs> so we'll do that later with the nooch. So let's do some uh, gravy. Anything else, Reeves? Oh, I had, should we talk about the processed question? A couple of new people came in and were asking about Canada shipping again. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't have Canada shipping right now. It got really bad with the pandemic, and I was getting these random customs charges, and nothing was arriving in a timely manner. Uh, I th some things I ended up resending an extra time, and then all of a sudden both would show up, and it was just like a total nightmare. So I had to stop doing the Canada shipping, and I hope to have it back in a few months, early next year. Um, I'll have more control over things. So I apologize for that. I know that that is frustrating, especially since I already offered it, and then I took it away. So please forgive me, but I will have it back soon. Um, okay. Let's do gravy. So my mushroom gravy, if you haven't <laughs> tried it, it works the same way. I'll, I'll show you how I like to make it. I've got some potatoes. Let's do, let's prep some, well, let's prep the gravy first. Go ahead, Reeves. Leslie said, has anyone else found themselves using dil Dylanisms while cooking? In the last week or so, I've noticed myself exclaiming, oh yeah, oh, yeah. oh that's hot. Oh, that's hot. <laughs> and mm-hmm, 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 <laughs> I don't, d are those Dylanisms? I guess they are. <laughs> My favorite is, oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay. So for the mushroom gravy, again, if, if you want to keep it super clean, nothing salty in it, then just use the powder. Again, though, I like to throw in some cashews. I like to throw in a little bit. This is my... This thing lasts a long time. This is uh, the Costco bin of soy sauce. And I don't use soy sauce, but maybe once a month. Um, but I'll just put maybe a teaspoon or less just to give it a little bit of that salty flavor um, that I like from soy. You could use miso paste. You could use the coconut aminos, the tamari, the, you know, whatever. And then, again, same idea. S start sprinkling in enough powder to get the job done. Both of these, although they are both, although they are different uh, size containers, they both make a half a gallon. This stuff goes further, which is why you need less, because it's not so much of the nooch, of the nutritional yeast, which takes up a lot of space because the nutritional yeast is the big flakes, you know? So I got away with a smaller container for the gravy, if, in case you're wondering. So let's uh, put enough in there to get this right. You might have to add. And grind it for like a minute. Really let those, uh, oh, that's perfect. Okay, I, I, I got that one right on the first try, I think. <laughs> Let's get our potatoes prepped. Um, by the way, these two items, yes, you can keep them in the fridge like you would any leftovers, but because it's potato-based, as soon as it gets cold, it's going to harden up 
So if you want to reheat it, I, I wrote this on the back. I need to make new videos. There's a link on these labels that says, watch our cheese sauce video. Well, I need to make a new one. And I still need to make one for the banana pancakes. I'm off task. Uh, what I'm trying to say is you can reheat it on the stove by like adding some water, heating it up, and it'll loosen back up just like this. But uh, I just wanted to tell you that. Usually, most people, I think, just make the amount that they need because it's so fast and easy to make fresh. Um, OK, so potatoes. How I do potatoes is, this is a ton of potatoes, but I wanted to eat them for the next few days, so I made a lot. That is my uh, four-quart off-brand Instant Pot that you see. And all I did was um, I peeled potatoes. I cut them into a little bit smaller pieces. And then I threw them in the Instant Pot with a little bit of water. And what you see on top is garlic powder and onion powder. I like the garlic powder and onion powder flavors to kind of cook through a little bit. And then I'll add, you can either add, well, I, you could put more water in when you're cooking and just use the liquid you've got. Or you can add a little bit of nut milk. This is a uh, soy milk. And then just get mashing. You could use a potato ricer if you want. But I think that when you do it in the Instant Pot style like this, it's just easier to use the masher. So the in six pot, six quart Instant Pot is on sale for like 50 bucks now on uh, Walmart.com. Yeah. Just saw. Somebody asked a question, does the pancake taste only like bananas? <laughs> we'll get to the pancake. Don't you jump the gun. People the pancake's so coming. about the pancake. The pancake is so good. I can't wait to show it to you. Uh, you got to try it. Um, it's just so, it's so good and it's so simple. Anyway, don't get me off task, y'all. Come on. <laughs> OK, this is pretty good looking on the potatoes. All right, I just mashed them up for a minute. And that is how I usually make potatoes. Reeves? That is how you usually make potatoes. <laughs> you told me, put it on you when I go to the sink. Marla so I'm not said, so boring. I bet you could use cheese sauce for your liquid and have cheesy potatoes. Oh! Whoa, that sounds is, That's really almost good. a tambourine. If you had put a dollar on that, we'd be <laughs> singing and dancing right now. <laughs> OK, uh, let's do this. Let's serve a little. Ding, ding, ding. OK. So let's throw a little potatoes in the bowl there. This is such a timely recipe and product. This is also, a, yeah, for Thanksgiving, you mean? Mm-hmm. I love making uh, roasted vegetables, mashed potatoes, gravy. Is there one other item I usually do with that? I forget. The green bean. The green bean casserole. Don't we have a? Do I have a YouTube video of that? I think yeah, I have a YouTube. With the slivered almonds and the. Oh. The ma the mushroom gravy because I don't use like a what do they call that? M mushroom soup, cream, cream of mushroom, mushroom soup. soup. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is almost like a cream of mushroom soup if you just kind of play with your water ratio a little bit, and you can use this to make a green bean casserole like the one I do in my YouTube video. Just search "Well Your World Green Bean Casserole," and. Uh, this works really well. If you're well. doing it for the holidays, go wild and throw the cashews in there for that casserole because it's so good. Yeah, that, yeah, it is. <laughs> I'm gonna this. I want to mix this up again in just a second. I might need to add more water now that it's been sitting. It's gotten a little bit thicker. And yeah, this will thicken up, like I'm like I'm saying. So you may have to just like adjust the water a little bit. No big deal. I just threw Ooh. in another couple of tablespoons. Hey, there's Buff. Hey, Buff with the super chat. Thank you, Buff. It's an actual blender dance. Yeah, this is a blender dance and a super chat dance. Thank you for that. <laughs> okay, let's check this out. Your mom out. said stuffing. Oh, yes, yeah, stuffing balls. That's what you're forgetting. Mm, look at this beautiful mushroom. Gravy. Dylan, I'm going to have to save these pa pancake questions for you because they're coming in hot. They're coming in hot? Hold the pancake questions till the pancake session. No, go ahead and put them. I'm just going to okay. save them for them. She'll save them. All right. The other thing I love to do when I make this gravy, if, if you got a little more time, is I will saute, chop up some mushrooms, dice up an onion, saute it on the stove, and then pour this into that. So you have a nice chunky mushroom gravy. 
I love doing it that way as well. Let's have a taste. This is the, f uh, the new batch of mushroom gravy with potatoes, with my favorite mashed potatoes. Oh man, so good. I really did nail it with these two products, I'm not gonna lie. Mm. It's really super tasty. It's really, really, really good. They're your, um... And you saw I barely put a tiny bit of salt in, and you taste that sort of traditional, I don't know why I feel like a soy saucy flavor in a gravy is traditional. I don't know, but it just like hits the spot for me. But I all, all of my products are always SOS free, no added salt, oil, or sugar. So let's talk about, I had a really good question. Sorry, Reeves, did I interrupt you? You're about to say something. No. Okay. Maybe you didn't, but I don't remember. A little dried or fresh chopped chives on top of this. Mmm. I didn't think of that until right now. This is really good. I would just keep eating that. Mm. And the potatoes, I made them really garlicky. I love garlicky mashed potatoes. I better put this away back in the Instant Pot because I want to eat it again. <laughs> I love cheese on the mashed potatoes too, though. Whoever said that. Do you? Yeah. Well, we got plenty of that too over there. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Let me have one more bite. Pardon me for a moment. <laughs> so we have, Reeves, can you read that question? Yeah, from earlier? Mm hmm. Okay. I want to keep eating them. So somebody asked on Instagram I know you have had a lot of discussion around processed foods and the need to limit them in the diet. What makes your products, which are great by the way, less processed than others you've process that are processed in similar ways. Would you recommend that your products be also limited in use? Okay. Good question. Great question. Amazing question. Um, yes, I agree that uh, you don't want to eat highly processed food. When I say highly processed, it can mean many things. Many people, uh, many people, consider processed in a variety of ways, okay, based on your own personal situation. I would say that the bare minimum for me, and I'm not saying that you should necessarily agree with me, but for me, the processed foods that I avoid would be anything where the food, some part of the whole food has been taken out. Those are the kinds of foods that I don't like, especially if they are, if you're eating a lot of calories of those things. If we're talking about how I have some citric acid in one, uh, some of my sauces, or a little bit of xanthan gum in some of my sauces. Those, are, those account for such a tiny fraction, and they're only there, they're not there like a lot of processed foods, which are actual foodstuffs. Th these are just some to help with the, the processing itself. Those kinds of things I don't worry about too much. It's in such small quantities that, uh, for me, those are fine. Um, but what I have a problem is when things are actually being removed from the food, so it's not whole anymore. Obviously, date powder is not a whole date anymore because it's powder. But for me, it's still a whole food product because all it is, the only thing taken out of this thing is the pit of the date. So the whole entire food is here. It's been dried and it's been ground up. Same with the potato flakes that are inside of the cheese sauce mix, for example. Those are cooked russet potatoes that have been dried and then they're in like a flake, like a, cheat, like a nutritional yeast would be. Uh, in the mushroom gravy, there are shiitake mushrooms that have been dried and ground into a powder. Obviously we know that, so first of all, let me be clear, to me, that kind of processing isn't the problem. Uh, if you're creating something that is too calorie dense, you know my calorie density chart, there it is, where I talk about eat the whole food from the first three categories. Yes, that is absolutely true, but we all love to add sauces to things, and as long as the sauces aren't super high in calorie density, and they're not the center of your plate, I think that that is usually okay for most people that maintain our diet. If you're doing a Chef AJ version of the diet, which is admittedly much more strict, where you're not having any kind of overt fats like nuts, seeds, avocado, soy products, where you're not having any kind of processed starches like whole wheat pasta, um, bread flour, things like that, then you know maybe you want to avoid those things. But I think most people that watch Well Your World are uh, not quite that level of strictness. Um, but anyway, to be clear, some, some, anything that has been 
changed from its whole food form is technically processed, right? So, every, you know, anything that's a bottled sauce, this is, these are all processed food products. But the important thing is just to understand how you're using them. Like, I, I wouldn't ask you to eat, you know, a bowl of nutritional yeast. That's too much calorie-dense food that's been processed. But I try to make sure that all of my stuff has the whole food versions of these things. Like, I don't, you know, in my Stardust, they put a little bit of ground rice hulls, for example. That is just acting as a, a desk uh, to stop it from clumping. Um, and it's just a tiny little bit. But this, again, you know, the, the rest of it is just a little bit of nutritional yeast, spices, flavors, whatever. Do we have a super chat? Yeah. Oh, boy. Hey, Kathy, thank you so much for the super chat. I don't have anything witty to say. I just wanted to play in the send stuff to Dylan and Reeb's game. <laughs> Sorry, I hope I didn't throw you off that plant. Right? No, you, that was too short it. of a tambourine for oh. Kathy. I'd actually like a little more. Wow, those tambourine eyes. <laughs> My goodness, Esmeralda. Pretty good. <laughs> so, was I ranting by accident? In a way that people thoroughly enjoy and love. Please continue. Oh, what else do I have to say about that? I uh, have stuff, something to say about yeah, it. Yeah, please. Um, going along with what you were saying about Chef AJ, sh you know, she does, she and True North Health Center and Alan Goldhammer, they do the salt free. They do the sugar free. And I really think that when you put something like your sauce or your salad dressing or any of your pro like you personally, Dylan, Homes, you add miso and you add olives to your food because you mm -hmm. don't have a problem with overeating things. But people that do, keep it salt free. They are salt free. I don't think that you're going to eat too much of it. I eat the Indian sauce all the time with potatoes and I eat it till I feel full and I'm never like, oh, I ate too much. I'm stuffed. Never. Yeah. And, you know, that's great. The, the sauce is. Uh, exactly. I mean, you said it perfectly, Reeves. You can add these things to your food. They're not going to increase the calorie density of the food. If you look at the calorie density of, of this, just based on the powder, it looks higher than when you add the water or whatever to it. So, but anyway, if you take all of my bottled sauces and you calculate the calorie density, it's, they're all very low. So you're not, you don't have to, these are all True North Health Center approved products. In fact, I was just emailing with uh, Dr. Alan Goldhammer, who's going to send out an email to his entire list promoting the products. So these are all totally SOS free. They are not the processed kind of food products that I tell people that they need to avoid that have fake food ingredients in them that don't come from whole natural food. And so that's kind of where I stand on that. So I don't think these fall into that same category. Was there anything that I missed on that topic? Any follow-up questions? Let us know. We can always come back to it because it is such an important question. Focus on calorie density. These things aren't going to add a ton of calorie density to your food. They're mostly just flavor enhancing and simplification. The real reason these products are, exist is to level the playing field for us because we don't get to just go to the grocery store and buy whatever damn thing off the shelf that says healthy on it because none of that stuff is. It's all BS. Now I'm plant ranting. <laughs> but this is to give us the same opportunities that everybody else has when they don't want to have to cook tonight and because none of us wants to cook every single night, every single day, every single meal. And these are just, you know, Jen Hawk, Dr. Jen Hawk is here. Hello, Jen. She always says that I'm, I'm selling energy conservation in a bottle. And it's so true because at the end of the day, this needs to be fast and simple and you don't want to stress out about what you're going to eat tonight. And these just offer you, you saw how fast it was to throw together that mac and cheese. It's like a five minute meal. And so that's, that's the point for me. The banana pancakes, same idea. Obviously pancakes, these, I, made, I chose to use oat flour instead of like a wheat flour, but it's, st so it's ground up oats, it's still gonna be higher calorie density than if you just ate a bowl of oatmeal. Obviously you know that to be true, it's a pancake versus a whole food. This has the whole oats in it, but they're dried a little, it's not like a bowl of sloppy oatmeal which is much lower, well not much lower and probably in calorie density, but there's a higher water content. So it weighs more from water. So anyway, that's just a little uh, explanation of the whole process thing. Let's move on to the next item. Shall we make an Italian pasta salad? Yeah, one of the throwback products. 
So one of the things we love to make are some sort of mixed salads. Yesterday I did the PBNSG uh, video, and we made a potato salad with my sweet mustard dressing, which was so good. A potatoes and arugula and uh, olives. <laughs> Chef AJ's here. Condiment responsibly. Yes, do condiment responsibly. Um, so we made a potato salad yesterday. Today we're going to make an Italian pasta salad that I really love. It's very simple to throw together. I've got, this is actually, I think, a gluten-free spirals that I used in this one just because I had it. And uh, so I'll, I'll cook a little bit of pasta, cool it off, throw it in here. And to that, I'm going to add a little bit of red onion, some bell pepper, some tomatoes. So while I'm chopping, Reeves, do you have any uh, anything you'd like us to talk about during this QVC rant? <laughs> Um, somebody said, I love the sweet heat with shredded super king oyster mushrooms. Ooh, that wow. That sounds really good. Just eat a bowl of mushrooms with the sweet heat on top? That I sounds awesome. I wonder if she shreds awesome. them. Like, you know how you can shred the mushrooms to make, like, a, a hmm. cold... Oh, right. <laughs> I okay. don't say that, actually. No, don't say the P word. <laughs> the P word. A pulled P word. Okay, I think this is plenty. So Gina I'm said, has anyone mixed the cheese sauce and the gravy together? That Whoa! I can tell you a story about that. It was a bad day. Just kidding. Basement joke. Uh, no, I haven't done that. It sounds pretty good. Have you, Gina? Have you done that? We could try it. Okay, that's enough for onion. Let me set this aside. I need more you bowls. Jesse said, all of the celebs are here. Is there something going on we don't know about? Yeah. A QVC special. This is our QVC special. special. What do you mean, Jesse? Jeez, how to hurt a guy's feelings. <laughs> okay, then a little bit of bell pepper. You know, you can you can just eyeball all of this. None of this is, is needs a recipe. And I just kind of cut these into strips, turn them, dice them up, and you're done. Okay? Simple, simple. Jen Hawk said, we heard a rumor about pancakes. That's what everyone said. Pancakes saying. are coming. Pancakes are coming. <laughs> All right. A little more of this. All right. Then we got, how about a few, I'll throw a few olives in. If you don't do olives, don't do olives. Oh, we need some tomatoes, too. So let's grab some of these. These are like some monster cherry tomatoes. Yeah, they're so look big. Look at the size of these things. What do they even call them? They look like baby Romas. They don't even say. They just say angel sweet. And you can chop these up any which way you want. I'm just going to make it easy and go lengthwise through these things. And this is, like I said, you just, n no recipe needed. Just throw in a little at a time of each one of these items. You can give it a stir as you go. And then you'll know, okay, I've got enough of that. I need a little more of that, whatever. Let's do a few olives. I like black olives in this salad. Olives are both fat and salt. So beware. Condiment responsibly. <laughs> okay. Throw the olives in the pot. And then we've got some parsley right here. So take a little parsley. That just, you know, every pasta salad has a little bit of parsley or basil, whatever. And we'll just chop through this a little bit. I love parsley. Do you? Do you like the curly or the Italian most? Curly, for sure. Why? I don't know. I think it was one of those things that used to be used as a garnish when you were little, and your parents would say, don't eat that. And now it's like, <laughs> we eat all that stuff. <laughs> Fair enough. So this is with the Italian, but you could also do this with my balsamic vinaigrette. I mean, frankly, you can do this with anything. We did, last night, like I was saying, we did the potato salad with the sweet mustard, and I ate the rest of that today. It was so, so good. And then just, again, you're just going to eyeball this, add a little like that, and then take your spoon and give it a toss. And then add a little more, 
Do you think it needs it? All of my sauces, by the way, we were talking about process. They're all sweetened with either whole dates or whole raisins or whole figs. Those are the three sweeteners that I use in my various products. And it's not an easy process. No, they're, they don't grind very easily. So I, it's and it's much more expensive than using processed sugars, you know? Oh, yeah. It's a very specialized process, that's for sure. Yeah. Okay, there it is. Pasta salad. What do you think of that? Looks pretty good. Hey? It looks good to me. I love this recipe because it's so familiar to the not people that eat like this. <laughs> the <laughs> yeah, sad that's diagrams. true. I would have probably chopped even more. My, my noodle ratio is a little high on this. Mm -hmm. But I would have, um, I, I, you could have used the sweet mustard and the balsamic are definitely two that would be perfectly good. The Desert Catalina is probably good. It's a little more of a tomato-based dressing, so it's a little different. And what's the other one? The uh, Sweet Heat might be a little, a little different in this one, but it would still work. You know it would still taste good. So let's have a little hit. A little hit. Mmm. So good. So simple. Throw in some greens, too. You could chop up some arugula or spinach. Certainly don't need pasta in this salad. We are just being traditional. What else, Reeves? Um, Italian mm. is my favorite dressing. I just have to say. Because well, I never thought in a million years there would be an actual healthy. Because uh, they not have the full of oil. Well, yeah, they have the oil-free mm. ones, and then the oil-free ones are full of sugar. They're full of either either processed sugar or the fake sugar substitutes that make them taste like some sort of chemistry experiment. <laughs> which is just disgusting. That used to be our fa my favorite one to bring to Sweet Tomato. Yeah, we did use to, oh man, you had to go there. Sorry. <laughs> Poor Sweet Tomatoes. Rip. But yes, we did used to take our dressings into the Sweet Tomatoes, anywhere there's a salad bar, and mm -hmm. uh, smuggle them in, because why wouldn't you? Okay, that was the pasta salad. What do you think? Should we make some? Let me at least hit heat up the griddle. Oh boy. Oh, that's just me. Okay. Heat up the griddle. Well, heat. I don't need the blender anymore, do I? Heat up the griddle. Nobody did a super chat. I just excited about the griddle. You, that hey, that tambourine is only for super chats. Oh, so okay. I can't use it for. A yeah, that's time. you. You've taken that away. Yeah, I do have to keep it special, don't I? Okay, well, while this is heating, let's talk about this date powder and have another bite of uh, mashed potatoes and gravy, because why not? <laughs> mm. Mm -mm. Oh, that's good. Mm. Okay. Date powder is, a lot of people call it date sugar, which is really just whole dates ground up. I don't know if all date sugars are like that or if anything's been removed, but I can tell you, you ain't never tried one like this. It is really, really good. Check this thing out. It looks nothing like date powder that I saw. I've tried several of them in the stores because I wanted to uh, compare, and mine is the best I've ever had, and I'm very excited to say that. Um, it'll clump a little bit. You can see a little bit of a little bit of clumps. That's another reason why I like this container because you can shake it around a little bit if it does clump. But look how light colored. This is, I'm not even telling you what kind of date this is. It is uh, from Tunisia, and it is an amazing, sweet, the, the texture is like melt in your mouth, soft. It's like nothing like those other ones I pointed to the pantry, because I have a couple other date powders in there, that date sugars, that are just totally different. So what I think I'd like to do with this is maybe make, let's just do a whole breakfast, is I'll usually, uh, Take some oats. I'm gonna, I'll make a little oatmeal. This is what I use it for most often. Throw some oats in the pan. Reeves, keep everybody company. I don't think you really emphasize just how crazy special that date powder is. Tell we, us more. We did, your mom was here and we did a blind taste test and she was just like, oh my God. 
it's not just like a little better or the best. It's like in a different league of better. And I'm not just saying that because it's our product. I swear. We w it if you were lying, better. you wouldn't get away with it for long right. because we've sold a lot of it. It tastes better. The texture is amazing. It's just incredible. That's a rave review, y'all. And she's not exaggerating. Really is super good. But let's talk about it because date, this is dates that are dried even more than dates already are and then ground into a powder. So obviously the calorie density on this is going to be a little higher. But you're just using it as a condiment. Like AJ said, condiment responsibly. Um, you can use it for bait. I mean, you can use it for anything. Uh, it's obviously going to be more expensive than if you just used whole dates for things like that were wet things that could be blended. But for simplicity and, and speed, you can just sprinkle a little bit of this on your oatmeal. You can use it for baking as an actual sugar substitute for any recipes that you like, that you're trying to convert from the old days, whatever. This is really nice. It doesn't totally dissolve into nothing, obviously, because the fiber is all there. Uh, nothing, like I said, has been removed from this. I don't like to have anything removed from my products, so this has got all the fiber. And if you watch, for example, some people ask about you know, this compared to molasses and other sweeteners. Uh, Dr. Greger's got a good video on nutritionfacts.org that is comparing all, of, it's from a few years ago, but it's comparing all of the different sweeteners and the date sugar scores the best because it's got all the fiber and all the good stuff still in. Um, so really that is all it is, is dried up dates that have been ground up. There goes my oatmeal. I remember watching that video like a million years ago. Mm -hmm. So all I do is when I make oats, I just add the oats to the pot, add the water, and as I'm adding the water, I'm stirring to, and I have the, the consistency, the texture when I'm stirring it with my hand, I can feel how much water seems right, so I don't have to measure my oats. Once you've had a lot of oatmeal, you can just add cold water to it, and you know just how, how much water until you need to stop if you do a stirring motion. Then I bring it up to a boil, and then I turn it down, give it a little stir, and really you can, you can let it cook longer or not, but it's really at that point is done. Any other questions coming in while that simmers for a moment? Somebody was asking if you can use the date powder in oat clusters. Yes, but you can definitely use the date powder in oat clusters, but it's going to take a lot because, you know, like what did I put on here when I measured it? Where did I put it? I think one whole date is like, you know, one to two teaspoons of date powder. So you'd be using quite a lot of date powder, and you'd need to add some liquid or something because to rehydrate it. So you're better off probably blending, since you already need to blend the dates and the bananas, I probably wouldn't use the date powder. I should just tell you, use it in everything, right? It's QVC. we got to sell, sell, sell. But that's probably not one of the things I would use the date powder for. I would do it in other baking, like, you know, any kinds of... Uh, like it's in my pancakes, for example. Like people were talking about black bean brownies or yes. something like that. So things like that. I mean, that's not m very different from... I guess if your oat cluster recipe was designed to use date powder, that would work. But you'd have to have something liquidy in there because the banana isn't enough liquid to bring the date powder back to normal date texture, hydration, in my opinion. I also like to throw in uh, some berries. Where is my bag of berries? Did I use them all yesterday? Oh, here it is. So I like to throw in, at the last couple of minutes, then my oatmeal is going. Oh, that's how I do it too. I'll take a handful of frozen berries and drop them in there and then give it a stir. I'll also throw in sometimes, I mean, I have an oatmeal video on YouTube, but I throw in a lot of different stuff um, flax seeds, chia seeds, pepita. I'll throw in nuts, some walnuts. Okay, there's that. Kill the heat, bring it over, and boom, there is some oatmeal. Somebody asked, what would be the date powder versus sugar ratio? Oh, you can probably use it, do it one to one. And then um, I'm not exactly certain, but you can probably just uh, sub it out equal. 
Yeah, because we it's, don't it's like things sugary. super sweet. Right. This way of eating anyway, I would say. And sprinkle on that day powder just like that. Mm -mm -mm. And that, I mean, I only probably put on a teaspoon, which is like, you know, one date or less. And then where do I put my spoon? And then somebody asked, are the ratios for using it in place of whole dates um, on the label? Yeah, I put a... Uh, I put one whole date equals two teaspoons, which is never going to be exactly perfect um, because it just sort of depends, but what kind of dates are you comparing it to and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I tried to get a rough estimate. Mm. So condiment responsibly, that's how I like to do the date powder is one of my favorite ways. <laughs> and the other is the pancakes, which our griddle is now at this temperature. So let's kick this breakfast Whoa. up a notch Somebody and make some said, pancakes. How can I develop a healthy love for the crappy texture of oatmeal? You don't have to eat oatmeal. You don't have to eat oatmeal. You can make porridge or farina or yeah, kanji or anything. But yeah, if you don't like the texture, you're going to struggle with any kind of, of porridge stuff. Mm. I added a little bit more date powder. It's super good. Super good. Okay. What else do you eat for breakfast? You know, hash browns. That's what I love to do this grill for too. Oh, yeah. Is doing hash browns with a little bit of chopped bell pepper and onion. Put the frozen hash browns. The frozen hash browns are usually, you can find them just potato. Nothing else added. Mm -hmm. I'll mix it up in a bowl with some pepper. And uh, you could flavor it if you wanted by adding something like a Mexican fire blend. And then just lay them out. Reeves actually taught me this. Lay it out on the griddle and just leave it alone until it, you know, almost stops steaming. Until it's cooked as, as, as dry as you want it. And that is a pretty good breakfast, too. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's do some pancakes. That's really good. I would definitely continue eating if I wasn't live. <laughs> Here's the pancake mix. Isn't that pretty? It's very pretty. We made a blue version for the boys. <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> a little gender joke today, everybody. Welcome in. Thank you for being here. This is our QVC special. If you're just joining us, we're making all Well Your World products. Be sure to go back to the beginning and start over. Give that a real QVC on the other camera. This one? A real QVC point. Like this? Know. Oh, yeah. Oh, my fingers are all dirty now. I told you you should go get a manicure. Plus, we have this weird lighting going on because it's now dark. Yeah. Okay. Banana pancake mix. This thing is so good. No, it doesn't. Who does it? Does it taste like only bananas, says Lisa? No. It doesn't just taste like bananas. The banana is there to give it a little bit of sweetness um, and, and body. Okay. And body. You know, I could have made a boring old banana, uh, a boring pancake mix like the ones you can buy in the supermarket that are full of dextrose and enriched white flour and uh, all that garbage. I chose not to do that. I'm not trying to uh, just compete with all the big companies. We're trying to do something totally different that is actual health. Okay. So this has. Um, this has oat flour in it. I did not on this first batch manage to find an oat flour that is certified gluten free. So to all of you that are wondering if this is legit gluten free, technically no it is not. I don't know how much cross contamination there is with the gluten getting into the oats and stuff like that. I'll be honest, I'm learning more and more about that lately, but I don't know at all. So I don't know if it's really gluten free when you use that kind of flour. So your bottle will have a sticker on it that says not certified gluten free because I don't want anybody to think that this is gluten free officially uh, because it doesn't have that special flour. I'm going to look at doing that for the next batch in the future, um, but I just wanted to clarify that for you now. Okay, so it's oat flour. We got the banana powder in here, which is just dried bananas, dried into a powder, just like the date powder is, is just bananas, whole bananas. Nothing's been taken out except water. Okay, then we've got, um, I wanted to give it another added oomph. So I use the date powder. 
That is one thing in here. So instead of the fake sweeteners and sugars and stuff like that, I add a little bit of date powder in here that gives it a little sweetness along with the bananas. And then the added oomph is actually the whole, it was actually Chef AJ got me on to that whole vanilla bean when she was making her date shake for me when we visited back in March pre-pandemic. And uh, she made us a date shake with and used the vanilla bean powder. It was the whole dark vanilla bean that was ground up into like a dark brown or almost black powder. And I used a little bit of that in here. So it has a little bit of a vanilla flavor. I love it. I think you're really going to like it. Let's make pancakes. It is so easy. You need a bowl. These are my, any of the gear that I'm using, you can find down below. There's a gear link, uh, wellyourworld.com slash gear. And uh, so the bowls, the griddle, whatever. <laughs> what? Vanilla bean powder is like $1,000. Someone said. Yes, the 10 pound box that I bought was like $1,000. It was, it's insane. But it, you were <laughs> worth it. <laughs> okay? I, yeah, I know. You, nobody would have known the difference and I would have saved $1,000. But I wanted to put it in because I really, it really does add a, a nice je ne sais quoi. Okay? So just, this is so easy. Again, you don't actually have to, if it's your first time, you can follow the instructions and you do, you know, X amount, two cups of dry mix with a cup and a half of milk, whatever. I don't make it like that. I just add the powder to the bowl like this. However, I mean, you're just kind of guessing at how much. If, if you want to measure it, you can use your kitchen scale. And the, the whole container makes, you know, depending on the size of pancake, a couple dozen pancakes in the container. Let's add a little bit more, because you know I'm going to hit these after this show. Uh, Someone's so like, you're having such an eclectic dinner. Yeah, this is a not a normal dinner. This is a bit of a wonky <laughs> dinner. Uh, and while you're mentioning it, I will take another bite of oats. Thank you very much. Dill, you're going to have to go back and make the cauliflower. Well, I thought. Yes. Did I skip the cauliflower? Uh-huh. Dang it. I had that on my list last by accident. Your, your reproduced digital list had it in the proper order. Oops. Okay. Sorry. Somebody asked if you can use water instead of plant milk. I haven't tried that. I uh, don't. I don't know. I haven't tried that. My directions say use a plant milk, a soy milk or an oat milk. Um, we'll go ahead and make a savory dish at the end. Actually, we have, we're going to make some avocado toast later anyway. Oh, yeah. So pour in a little milk and then grab your whisk and start whisking it around. That's not enough milk, as you can see. Then add a little bit more until you get the hang of things. Whisk it around. Not enough. Add a little more. You're only adding the one thing, so it's not like you gotta be. Uh, there are only two things in here. Add a little more. No, two sticks of butter and four eggs. Right. <laughs> exactly. There's. That's how. Don't don't the box ones from the store. This is a pretty thick batter. Now we're getting into something that you could use. If I made a pancake out of this, it would be a pretty big pancake. Um, oh, I didn't talk about the uh, baking soda, baking powder. Oh. I gotta tell you about the baking powder. You wanna make these pretty soon after because we're using a special uh, baking powder that is an SOS free, a truly SOS free baking powder. I'm gonna add a little more milk. You can, this is a very forgiving, we'll come back to the baking powder. This is a very forgiving um, powder, uh, mix in that you can add more milk and really thin it out and they're still gonna, it's, you're just gonna stretch it out further. Um, so you can definitely add more milk than my directions say and I think you're going to be very happy with it. So this is a bit thinner. I like this kind of consistency. See that? There it is. Get some ASMR in there. Some ASMR. Gina said, this show is going to be as long as cooking shows. Love it. Yeah, we're, I'm, I had no, nowhere to be tonight. I don't care if it takes three hours. we got recipes to make. Which, by the way, we do have a cooking show this weekend. Yes, we do. Please, Reeves, give us a pitch. Okay, we're doing all pumpkin recipes that are easy, easy throw-together pumpkin recipes for the fall season. Okay. www.wellyourworld.com slash cooking show. I wouldn't want to go any thinner than this. This is pretty good, I think. I'm pushing it, I'm, I'm pushing it a little because I want to do something I haven't done before. Last night was the first time I made it kind of thin. I'm making this one even thinner just to see what happens. But, uh, so let me tell you about the baking powder. Let me move things. So you can see the griddle. Let me put this here. Okay. I 
this riddle is so wonderful. You know I always rave about it. Can you see this? Okay. So, okay, we're done with the whisk. Let me rinse that. I hate when the whisks dry and get crusty. You can use almond milk, soy milk, any kind, except dairy. You don't use dairy. Don't All right. use dairy. So let's spoon on some batter. Ooh, Howie asks if you've tried it in a waffle iron. No, I got asked that the other day, and I haven't yet. But I would love to know uh, how that would work, so we'll have to try it. I'm not sure I trust the non-stickiness of most waffle irons. But yeah, that's what I was kind of worried about, too. I'm willing to give it a shot. So I made kind of some bigger pancakes. These, okay, I thinned it out pretty good. Let's see how they rise. If I need to, I'll make another batch less thin or add some powder to it. But this is the baking powder, okay, that I use. So I wanted to make, an, I wanted obviously this to be SOS free. And baking powder is like really, really salty. And so that wasn't going to work. So in order for me to make this work, I need to find some sort of baking powder that wasn't so salty. And I did. I used this energy stuff. I, I know I'm buds with the owner now. And uh, <laughs> this is the energy baking powder. So it is sodium free. It is uh, potassium free. All the freeze. And that is what we use in here. So this is one that activates pretty quick. And so as soon as you make, as soon as you mix it up, you do want to go ahead and make your pancakes. Don't let them just sit for too long. I'm going to make a little more. I'm going to make this one a little thicker, and you'll see that they, they puff up quite a bit more. We'll add a little milk. And these only take a couple minutes on one side. Look at all those bubbles. Yep, they bubble right up. And look how beautiful these are. Oh, my goodness. I never in my life... Oh, they puffed right up. Pancakes that look like that. Really? Yeah, I don't know. Tell us more. I don't know. I don't know if I was always using like <laughs> really old baking powder or something, but I they always came out too dense. These just really puff up, especially when you flip them in there, because the baking powder is sort of like heat activated, I guess. I don't know. What do I know? I'm not a scientist. Actually, I am. But uh, they really puff up nicely. Buff says, I prefer flatter pancakes, not fluffy. Then you can just add more water. Yeah, then you just add more milk. But here, I'm making a thick, a really thick version. Of course, the thicker you go, the more mix you need. And so I'll, I'll make a real thick one for you. Someone was asking if they placed an order on Saturday, when should they expect delivery? It's taking, so, I'm so sorry about the order delay, everybody. I, it's just, with COVID and everything, way less orders get packed per day. And with the number of orders I had, it was crazy. So it shouldn't be more than a few more days. Many orders have already shipped, um, and you'll get an alert in your email. But it shouldn't be more than a few more days if, you're, if your order hasn't gone out yet. I apologize for that. Um, that's just the way it goes right now. But I'll continue to improve. We're, it's, it's hard. Because you've you got to keep everybody sort of distanced and everything. Okay, these are pretty much, oh, I went a little bit long. But check these babies out. Jesse they are was asking how many come in a container. For the pancakes. You can make, you know, it, like we're talking about here, look at that stack. You can make uh, probably at least a couple of dozen pancakes, depending on what size. Um, I sort of mimicked the directions of the conventional uh, pancake mixes that say one pancake is a little less than a quarter cup of batter. So they're probably technically smaller than this. Well, this is probably a normal pancake. But they're super. Super tasty. Let's, get, let's move these and make a, a, a thick one for you. So, is everybody excited now? Oh, this is a big <laughs> pancake. <laughs> just one giant. So, this is on the thick side. Um, and it's just whatever your preference is, you know? So, we'll see what happens. Mm. But I'm pretty happy with this mix. We don't eat it all the time. But it's fun on the weekends, for sure. Yeah. Put a little, this is where I would drop some blueberries, maybe frozen blueberries, whatever. And, and then you can. Chocolate chips. Chocolate chips, hey, Reeves. Oh, boy. 
Trader Joe's has those chocolate chips that are just, just the chocolate. I wouldn't make the pancakes this thick. This is, in my opinion, for the way I like them, this is a little too thick. Plus, the bottom is going to get too done. Oh, it's still good. Still good. You won't see as much bubbling when it's this thick. Man, these are good. But they cook through really nicely. I have the griddle on 350. Anytime I've gone too much hotter than that, they'll cook too much on the outside and not enough on the inside. So I do like about, about 350. This thing has been a couple minutes, so let's see what happens. Oh, I was a little bit early. It's a little bit light. I could have gone a little darker. Mm hmm but uh, these thick ones like this, though, they're going to have a little more trouble cooking them through. But super tasty. So simple. Okay. Am I annoying anyone filling my face like I am? No, I think they all enjoy watching in solidarity <laughs> of eating and celebrating. So that was the pancake mix. It's not, it's got just, it's not very banana-y. You can taste a hint of banana, but it's not like a crazy amount of banana. And the sweetness is just right, thanks to the date powder. And uh, so I think you're really going to have fun with that. Look at how, how much this thing puffed up. This is a monster pancake. And look how they just, this nonstick griddle is just magical. <laughs> so I haven't made these on a uh, stainless, well, definitely wouldn't work on a stainless steel pan. But I haven't made it on a non-stick pan on the stove. I, ha I don't know if it's going to give you as good of a result. I don't like non-stick pans. Lots of people in our community have a non-stick pan that's like their favorite thing. Cool. I've never found one. Or, excuse me, if I have, it only works for like a week and then it just doesn't perform very well. So, I don't love the whole non-stick thing. That's hot. I actually did cook through nicely. So... There's your pancake. And mm -mm -mm. <laughs> that one's a monster. That's, that's nice. Look at that. Mm. So it works. I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with the pancake mix. We can tell. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. No more griddle. I've overstayed my pancake welcome, apparently. <laughs> Someone said, I ordered the pancakes. I usually watch my family eat pancakes on Christmas morning while I eat a carrot. <laughs> now I will have pancakes. Yeah. Man, this is really good, actually. The thick ones are fun. It is a nice uh, Christmas morning. It's treat. way fluffier than I thought the thick one would be more dense, but actually it's super fluffy. Mm. Okay. So what's next on the list, Reebs? We got to go back and do our cauliflower. Okay. Do some... Do toast. we only have a, a couple of things left? Are those the only two things left? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I want to show you what my favorite thing to make with the nooch is. I'm going to eat this whole pancake. Okay, so, mm, okay, I got to stop. I'm self-conscious about microphone sounds. <laughs> so I'll just make, are you going to eat this? Yeah. Okay. That's what I'm waiting for. I'll make two then. People are like, uh, how is Dylan not stuffed yet? And they're like, Reeves, aren't you hungry? I got to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, Dylan's chewing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I need to tell you guys about this recipe. Do. Tell okay. us. So back when I was doing the Chef AJ thing, and you know how sometimes she'll have the veggies for breakfast, I came up with this idea, and it wasn't quite veggies for breakfast because I would cheat and use soy milk, but maybe that still counts. But anyway, I showed it to Dylan, and he's like, oh, my God, this combination's so good. And now we can make it with our new Fiesta Fire Blend. And sometimes, Dylan, you make it with the f with like the frozen rice if you want to like beef it up. It's, yeah. I don't know why it's it's like a magical combination of these three things, and it's so delicious. Couldn't have said it better. Um, the first time, yeah, she made this for me. I'm gonna put this date powder back. I was blown away. It's so tasty. Super low cal. And, uh, you know, all our veggies for breakfast. And so all we, we have is two bags. These come in various sizes, but, you know, whatever. 
You're just eyeballing all it's this stuff. It's rice cauliflower. I rice bought, cauliflower. I bought it from Costco, but sometimes I get it at Trader Joe's. Costco is probably the cheapest. Yeah. Let's go over the stove for the rest. And people are saying this is a mukbang. <laughs> this is pretty much a mukbang. Um, yeah, I just need to tell myself that to make it okay that I keep eating. You know what I mean? <laughs> we could have put it in the title. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> it's a QVC mukbang. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> okay. Mm -mm -mm. That pancake was... I love that uh, big fat pancake. We have a video about this on YouTube, but not enough people have watched it, so we're going to tell you about it again. So you got the two bags of the rice cauliflower, or just one bag, you know, and you take your soy milk. You could do water, but the soy milk definitely gives it a richness, Reeves, right? Yeah. Oh, we just finished off that cord. I hope that I guessed okay on the amounts. And then Nooch. Do you want me to grab you another one? Oh, uh, no, I'm okay. Nooch, and then you take our fire blend. I like to, to shake the fire blend because it can separate the herbs from the spices. <laughs> That's what we say. And then pour in some of that. And it's that simple. Where is my uh, spoon? Let's get a new one. And then just crank the heat, get it on high, bring it up to a boil. Yeah, I think my amount, because as this melt, it may seem at first like, oh, I need more liquid. I need more liquid. Let the cauliflower melt. Believe me, it's going to give off a lot, lot of water liquid. water in the frozen stuff. Yeah, exactly. And then I like to use, just to show you, because for me, there's there that's like a bowl of four calories. It's not enough. It's not enough density for me. So I'll use this organic uh, brown rice mix from Trader Joe's. And it's, they also have that brown rice medley. It's, check out our Trader Joe's video if you haven't seen it. But you can buy, these are already ready to go rice. You can microwave it. Or in my case, with this recipe, I just throw, I'll do one bag of the rice cauliflower and one bag of real rice. And I love this dish like that. It gives it, just gives it a little more, a little more oomph. It'll keep me full longer, that's for sure. Okay. And then I just kind of test it out and add more as I go. Also, let's go, um, we're gonna make a little avocado toast with some, as healthy bread as you can find. A couple slices, you wanna go to a six. So we'll make an avocado toast too. Where are my avocados? This, because I want to show you how I like to use my everything seasoning. I got that out for you too, just because I like that on avocado toast and it's a mixture. Do you want it chopped? Arugula? Yeah. You want a little chopped arugula on your avocado toast? Yeah, never heard of her before. Never heard of her before. <laughs> <laughs> I wore that shirt yesterday. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Are you enjoying our QVC special? Your mom asked, what does QVC stand for? Qu oh, that I don't know, remember. Qu uh, quality. HSN is Home Shopping Network. I don't know what QVC is. I don't remember what QVC stands for, sorry. <laughs> Somebody name? said quality vegan condiments. Ha <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> That's so good. So we have a little bit of arugula here. You've heard of that before. And you just <laughs> want to chop a little bit of that for Reed's toast. Is that how you want it, or do you want it like downright minced? You've never put arugula in your avocado toast? I have not. I would just. You're making me you. feel a little embarrassed saying <laughs> that out loud, but no, I haven't. <laughs> some arugula and some uh, sliced cherry tomatoes on avocado toast is so good. See, this is more liquidy than I even want it now, but that's okay. I like it like that. And then you just kind of, you, you, eventually you just go by color. Add a little more nooch, taste it. I, I can see that I want to add more fire blend. It's not quite red enough. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's so good, I don't know how. And then just give good. that a stir. And then just let this simmer for a minute or two just to uh, kind of cook, I guess, the cauliflower rice. And this is such a nice little porridge. So low calorie density. You know, you got a little calories from the soy milk, but not much. And do even less soy milk than I did, because this is a little too soupy. But I would obviously still eat this gladly, gladly. 
So that's one thing that we love doing the nooch, using the nooch for. Add a little more nooch. Okay. And that's probably so ready to go. One time I made this with a can of diced tomatoes. Oh yeah. And it was so delicious. And not in a gross way, but I don't have a better way to describe it. It tasted like, um, oh, what do you call it? Rotel. Rotel? Rotel with Vel Velveeta. You know? Yeah, I mean, Rotel's dip? not, they have a, some pretty, they even have no salt Rotels, don't they? Oh, do they? With the, to, with the tomatoes and the spices that and would a little be good bell pepper or something. That would be good for like a nacho night. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're selling our products though. Please don't sell Rotel. Okay, don't buy Rotel, guys. This is our quality vegan condiment special. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> if you're just joining us. Condiments. Oh. Okay, so that's the dish. In this case, um, I put too much liquid in, but you know, no big deal. But this is, it smells delightful. This is our rice cauliflower porridge. Is that what we're going to call this? What do you even call this? I don't know what to call it. I need to give it an actual name because I call it something different every time. And a little bite. We'll let this simmer. It'll reduce a little. Mm, it's crunchy because of the rice. Mm. <laughs> it's hot. Okay. Oh, it's hot. I'll just put this on low. I'll put this on a three. That's like one of my favorite things. And our uh, toast is toasting. Our bread is toasting. So uh, tell us more. Tell us more things, everybody. What What else do you want to know about? They do have salt-free Rotel tomatoes. I thought so. Good to know. That's how I was planning to make the cheese sauce. That sounds like a good idea. Adding a little bit of uh, tomatoes to the cheese sauce when you're blending it up is something I have done before, but not Rotel. That sounds pretty cool, and not rice cauliflower. <laughs> Let's get this uh, avocado prepped. <laughs> he, someone said, he must burn his mouth every time. Every day, even when you're not watching. <laughs> it's gotta be hot, it's gotta be interesting, or why eat it? Actually, that is not the motto I live by. I eat a lot of uninteresting things. <laughs> Today, though, we're showing you all the interesting things that I eat. Ooh, Kathy Lacey says she adds um, peppers, onions, and mushrooms to the cauliflower oh, dish. Oh, wow. To that, to the pot? Mmm. That would be very good. We could definitely like fancy that up. I've added some other things. I'm ju I just like can't remember off the top of my head what other things I have added. Mm -hmm. But it might just be as simple as I put some olives on top or something. I, I love when you I've add the rice in. to it and make it an actual. The rice is pretty good. The rice is pretty good. Mmm. Okay. Let's make, let's get, we got our avocado ready. We got our arugula ready. Do we want to chop a couple of, do you like any, you don't like raw tomatoes. I won't give this to you. <laughs> I'll put a little, I'll just finely Sometimes slice. Sometimes I add them on there just, you know, so I feel fancy. So you feel like you're eating the rainbow? Yeah. <laughs> These, I'll just finely chop some cherry tomatoes. And sprinkle that on my piece. If you don't use the whole avocado, how would you recommend saving the rest of the avocado from turning brown? You could, oh boy! Well, you could drop it on the floor. That makes it extra good. Make sure I didn't get any uh, pieces in there. But you can save the pit, and then you can take your empty half that you've scraped out the avocado already, and you can close it back together. And that will stop some of the air from getting into what? it. Um, so let me show you. Do you want to see how I do it? Yeah, I want to see how you do it. So you can just go like that. Take the take the. So I've take. I have a half empty and a half in. Pretend I still have the pit. You should usually the pit helps to stop the oxidization. I don't know if that's a myth or not. And then you just close this up like that. And then it lasts longer. Hmm. I think a simple plastic bag. Oh. No, okay, listen. This is what you gotta do and it'll stay green. You gotta squirt a tiny little lime juice on this and then you put it in a bag. 
I reuse these bags, so don't yell at me for using them. I swear to God, I wash them and I dry them. Okay, you and don't then, have to swear, but <laughs> it's not like we're really going to hold you to the fire here. How do I put it on this other camera? Two. And then you zip it like this, so there's still this like little hole. <laughs> this is what I do, I promise. And then you do this. You vacuum seal it. I vacuum seal it with my mouth. And then it's good for like three or four days to stay green. Takes you three to four days to eat half of, half of an avocado. <laughs> but yeah, that sounds pretty good. Sorry, I just had to inform everybody. Yeah. The question was asked. So when I make avocado toast, I'll just take my regular butter knife, try to break it up a little bit. And then, I mean, I don't know, how much do you do? You you half of oh. an avocado on a slice of toast? That's a lot. A couple people say that they agree with me. They do the same thing, so I'm not the only one. The bag sucking? The ba sucks it out the bag with your I mouth. can't say you invented the technique. I have heard of the bag sucking before. I have done it myself. Sometimes I will do it. You want me to show you how I do it? What? The bag sucking? The bag suck? sucking? Yeah. I take it to the next level, Reeves. I don't mean to one-up you here, but what you want to do for the bag suck is use a straw. You take the straw, you bring the straw over to the corner, you close the bag up around the straw. What do you think of that, Rebecca? <laughs> but it's like you gotta get the straw. Now you go. And you pull a straw out with your teeth. <laughs> and as you're pulling the straw out with your teeth, you're, you're clenching the rest of it. And that usually works about, mm, 10% of the time. It's really not a good technique. Um, but, you know, you could also just put some saran wrap around your avocado. There's not a lot of space for air when you do it like that. But thank you for watching. <laughs> Somebody said, back to the potato salad from yesterday. Mm -hmm. How do you keep the sweet mustard dressing from soaking in too much after putting the potato salad in the fridge? Because uh, you ate it today. I ate it today, and it was uh, that thought didn't cross my mind because it didn't it didn't end up being any kind of an issue. This is heavy on the avocado, so I don't think I, I didn't I have not had that problem, and uh, so I would encourage you to try it. If you're using greens, like my arugula from yesterday was a little bit soggy in the potato salad today, but it didn't stop me. It was very good. Um, so that's one thing you could you could do. This is a calorie dense snack. Eating one whole avo avocado on toast, I would say, is not condimenting responsibly. <laughs> but an avocado is not a condiment. Well, it should be pretty much eaten as a condiment. Uh, I usually say that because oh. it is so calorie dense that you should probably not make it the centerpiece of a meal or a snack. Okay, somebody... But this is, you know, we're... We're, we're, this is QVC. This is quality vegan condiments. Go ahead, Reeves. Somebody uses the straw and bag technique, so ah. there you go. <laughs> well, they probably saw it off my YouTube video about the bag straw technique. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't have that video. Okay, Reeves, what would you like my order to be here as I dress up this avocado toast? What? Would you like me to put the everything oh. bagel seasoning on first? This is our lifestyle photo. <laughs> yeah. It is. I think yes. Put right? it on, yeah, because then it'll stick to the avocado. Okay, here is our everything bagel seasoning. This is this is like you would expect, except I added an ingredient, sunflower seeds. How do you like that? It's nice. And then it's got some garlic, onion, poppy seeds, sesame seeds, got a little bit of dried red bell pepper, and I just kind of, I, I don't really hold back. And I sprinkle it on hot and heavy, just like that. Mm -mm -mm -mm. No salt, of course. And then I'm going to put on a little bit of green, a little bit of the arugula per Rebecca's request. And then maybe we'll throw on a little bit of this cherry tomato. Mm -hmm. Reeves isn't eating these too, so I'm just going to go ahead and put it on both. And that is the Well Your World avocado toast. What do you think of that? Mm -mm -mm. What about some olives? No, we have enough fat on there, I think. <laughs> You could put some pine nuts. Some pine nuts? <laughs> mm hmm. Ooh, roasted red bell pepper, your mom said. Mmm. Super tasty. Oh boy. I mean, we're going to have to get off the phone here because I got to eat that. <laughs> and it's a noisy one. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. 
So, Reeves, how'd we do? I think we did pretty good. We made, what, nine or ten things? Yeah. And uh, I'm still working on all of them. I got this. I got my pasta salad. I got my uh, mac and cheese. I got my potatoes and gravy. We got the cauliflower over there. We got some pancakes here. It's going to be an interesting night. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe, though, some of those things are so fast. They just... Mm. We're only here for an hour and a half? Yeah. We budgeted two hours. We did. Mm. Okay. Any last questions about the products? Mm-mm. So good. All right, it's getting late. It's time to eat. Thank you, everybody, for joining us live. We will be back on Saturday. I hope you can join us for a live cooking show. We're making pumpkin recipes on Saturday. Yeah, at, we are. At 11 o'clock Pacific time, which is now 12 o'clock our time. Nice. We had an extra hour of sleep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, thank you all for the super chats, Reebs, if you might uh, help us with a little tambourine. Our new super chat ritual is apparently the Reebs on the tambourine. I have a mic in one hand, my tambourine, and I'm ready to go. <laughs> so sign up for the cooking show. Buy my products. Tell me what you think of the products. You can email me anytime. My email is on every single one of these labels. You can email me and tell me whatever you want. How much you love them, how much you hate them, I don't care. I will respond to you. I love you. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for being here. Thank you for the great support. It's been a hell of a two years since we first launched the uh, cheese sauce. And there's a lot more to come on QVC, quality vegan condiments. <laughs> <laughs> I love you all. Thank you for being here. Bye-bye.